Oh, cool. All right. So, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Jay Sate, also known as uh, East Quikelhausen on YouTube, which was a regrettable choice. But um, this is perhaps the least important talk of TransitCon all day. Um, take your day job home with City Skylines. So, uh, here, let me just get... Oh, whoops. That, uh, that shouldn't be there. Thank God with cities. Ooh, oh no. Uh, I don't want Robert Moses either. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's just move on. Ignore that. So, uh, about me. Uh, I've been a big time nerd for my whole life. Uh, mostly a train nerd, as you can see here. Uh, I worked at the MTA in New York City from 2018 to 21 to 2021 uh, last year. I'm now at BART. Uh, I'm an animator advocate uh, with all these systems getting all these digital screens kind of on cars for social media and in particular in station digital screens. I work in uh, graphic design, animation, and kind of digital content strategy for how to use these, where we can use animation, where we can use different things, where it's right to deliver sorts of information. Uh, almost unbelievably, I got both of these jobs due to my City Skylines work. So uh, I've been playing and making City Skylines assets and models for seven years uh, since the game came out in 2015. And I've made YouTube videos using City Skylines to illustrate and model cities, which is a pretty fascinating sort of thing that more people are interested in than you might see, I think. Um, I've worked with the official City Skylines uh, developers and publishers to make official videos about transit and about kind of base level transit principles, how you can plan it realistically. Uh, and I actually just, as of uh, last week, I released an official expansion pack called Vehicles of the World, uh, which is a little $5 pack that gets you 20 vehicles, 11 of which are transit vehicles, so you can start to really play around. We'll take a look at those later. Uh, the YouTube channel. Yep, people are are handling. Uh, ooh, the music's too loud. Whoops. Sorry about that. There we go. That should hopefully be a little better. Uh, I always forget that. Anyway, uh, so quick background on City Skylines itself. I'd imagine most of us have heard of it, but um, we start out with uh, J. Wright Forrester's Urban Dynamics book. Uh, Forrester was a computer scientist who attempted to, he was a data scientist and kind of systems engineer, uh, but he thought, man, it would be a really interesting idea to try to mathematically model cities uh, and boil down everything about cities, particularly in the 1960s, into mathematical formulas and equations. Um, turns out that that entire thing was pretty much BS, and of course you can't model cities like that. But... Um, Urban Dynamics led directly into SimCity, the classic of the genre, uh, inspired Will Wright to create it, and it was actually a map editor for an older game of his that he went and made uh, into a game, uh, because he thought that he could apply these Urban Dynamics lessons and try to model a city. Of course, SimCity, hugely popular. It probably influenced most of the people here, I'd imagine, in some fashion, at least the nerdier of you. Uh, it definitely influenced me, though not this earlier version, uh, later ones did. Uh, and eventually SimCity was kind of milked dry by EA, uh, who bought it, a big game of a publisher, and they closed down the studio that had made it, Maxis, which was local to the Bay Area. So, in 2015, City Skylines, uh, developed by the creators of the Cities in Motion franchise, a small indie studio out of uh, Tampere, Finland, swooped in with City Skylines uh, and saved the day, saved the city building genre by creating a really fantastic sort of game and a great framework for future games to sort of work from so yeah this did kind of supersede their great cities in motion series uh but alas we've got a city builder now rather than just transit stuff so uh city skylines has been out for seven years now uh and it's improved a lot since launch so it launched it was kind of lacking. It was made by like a 10-person team, and they worked pretty quickly to try to turn it around. But uh, since launch in 2015, and it was pretty good, we've had 10 major DLCs, uh, which are downloadable content. They're like 10 bucks, 15 bucks or so, uh, but go on sale frequently. We've had 13 minor DLCs. So these are packs that let you customize your city, make it really interesting and more unique and realistic. 
Uh, and there, if you play on PC, there are 280,000 custom mods, assets, maps, interchanges, things. Most of these are trash, but there are a lot of people who have dedicated hundreds or thousands of hours into developing custom assets, uh, which can let you really personalize your city, which is awesome. So you can kind of really get into this. There's uh, mods that make the traffic simulation much more in-depth uh, and less kind of gamey. There are mods that let you manage public transit more efficiently and effectively. There are mods that provide alternate vehicles. That's really what I started to do myself um, and making all sorts of vehicles and things. There are mods that let you ignore physics and blast roads straight through buildings, like not demolishing the building, just the cars drive through the building, whatever. So you can use these to build much more realistic and much less realistic cities. Uh, what's been added to the game since launch? Again, uh, if you're not super familiar with the current... Um, comments and things, just... Uh, does 10 major DLCs include the airport's DLC? Yes, it does. Whoops, you guys are using that screen. I need to use this one. Uh, that should be a little bit easier. So, uh, so he says, I'd like to see streets of cities kinds. There are actually mods that let you do that on the workshop that let you drive uh, through your city, which is super cool. So anyway, since launch, uh, we actually have added a day-night cycle that wasn't in the game to start. We've added new modes of transit, which are really cool. Uh, events, so you have to plan for event traffic and how to kind of move people around to major sporting events and concerts. Uh, that can really stress your throughput. We've seen large-scale industry, which provides some interesting planning choices, uh, which are actually kind of more in-depth than we used to have. Uh, and custom parks, along with campuses, new airport stuff. Uh, it's really cool. It's an interesting sort of dynamic to the city building genre in terms of games as a whole, because it used to be you could just plop down one building. It's like, this is a park, done. And now you have to figure out and sort of balance what you can afford with the scale, with the type of park uh, or the type of college campus or whichever you want, which is neat. So uh, in case you have followed City Skylines but have bounced off recently, the past two major updates have added a lot. So it's a great time to jump back in. Uh, we have trolley buses, which you can add to your city, which lets you kind of be the anti-Boston uh, by adding uh, trolley electric buses rather than battery buses. Uh, we've seen an overhaul to the metro system, so it used to be really uh, separate from other systems, and it could only exist underground. But now uh, they actually have, in the base game, elevated and ground level metro, which is really cool. So for the first time in a kind of base game city builder, uh, we have a truly integrated uh, rail network, which can be passenger rail, uh, you know, elevated in the suburbs, then go into a downtown tunnel, work like an RER or an S-Bahn. Uh, which is really fascinating and has unlocked a whole bunch of cool stuff. Uh, we've also seen four track stations for trains and metros from a new content creator pack. Uh, so you can do local and express service like New York. You can do quad platforms for busy tracks and busy train stations. Uh, or you can have express lines that bypass stations without getting blocked. So there's a lot more planning you've been able to do. We just saw custom buildable airports last week which handle vastly increased air traffic and have some fantastic transit connections as well, which, you know, you need. Obviously, everybody driving to the airport uh, would suck. And these are now built in and integrated in really fancy, cool ways. Uh, we've also seen, thanks to my pack, uh, extra transit vehicles. Uh, the airport's DLC also came with a bunch of them as well. Uh, and yeah, it's really kind of transformed even in the past year or two. Um, and there's just a lot more that you're able to do now without even delving deep into mods. So whew, that's a lot. Now, if you follow City Skyline stuff on YouTube, you've seen probably stuff like this. These are all City Skylines screenshots. Um, this is not how the game comes out of the box. This is a lot of careful modding and custom assets and commissioned assets uh, and video work. And, you know, they're always recorded in slow motion, then sped up. So the frame rate is a lot smoother and faster because when you get really huge cities and things like, excuse me, things like this, it kind of lags a lot, but it's still, I think a really fascinating way to model cities visually. So if you want to be building a sort of digital maquette, I think this is really the kind of primo way to do it instead of, you know, um, ooh, I can't remember the, uh, 
program it is, but instead of like more architectural renders or similar, uh, there are a lot of creators in the City Skylines community who can take commissions and you, can, you know, if you're handy with 3D modeling, you can create really nice looking assets for this. And all of a sudden you can model out a larger area than you might be able to do with a traditional render uh, still relatively easily, which I think is fascinating. Uh, with that said, if you're playing the game like this to make something that's this beautiful and nice, you really have to turn off a lot of the game mechanics since they're all really based on like BS 1960s math. Uh, you got to turn off some of that stuff. You do not want your fancy buildings and carefully crafted neighborhoods burning down randomly or, you know, high crime because education is low, which is a sort of dubious assumption that all of these city builders seem to make. Uh, and yeah, it's not the best. Vanilla! Cities sort of look like this uh, if you're not really careful with what you're doing, which is not the best and definitely not the most realistic. So uh, you sort of have to fight against this because this is sort of what the game wants you to build as an ideal city, uh, which you know is a little less good. You see it's really highway, really, really car-centric. Uh, every building needs auto access. Um attacked when you made those types of cities yeah i mean what's really tricky is that this is what the game wants you to build mechanically so you have to either plan really carefully against this and try really hard to avoid this sort of thing uh, or enjoy it and make this all work nicely more roundabouts yeah you can see the game loves roundabouts uh all sorts of highway junctions you see this 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 weird net like all these incomplete highway intersections it's a big mess uh it's not really a great tool for realistic visualization so if you're trying to bring it to work that's sort of an issue there's lots of gameplay conceits especially with traffic and wayfinding uh, and you know at the end of the day it's a game it's not a professional piece of software so you uh you lose a couple they, like you lose a little bit of stuff there uh yeah, so it's interesting. Next up, there are professional uses. So I've been able to turn kind of a city skylines career into an actual career in transit. Uh, you can really talk about a lot of cool stuff that's going on. Uh, one of the most popular YouTube channels for any of this is um, City Planner Plays, which has kind of exploded onto the scene recently. So it's got more than a quarter million subscribers and this guy's a real uh city planner i don't know many more specifics about it obviously nobody gets to be kind of god mayor uh like you are in this game so uh you know it's a little bit different but there are actually great um you know he's making great content city skylines has been used as outreach uh material um yeah sam burr is another very good one uh, it's been used as outreach material to help people kind of imagine a development in Stockholm. Um, we've seen other City Skylines YouTubers, uh, like one uh, Justin Rosniak, who's Do Not Eat, who might even be here. I don't know. Uh, but he makes, some, makes or made some fantastic stuff um, specifically about kind of the impact of urban planning decisions on cities. He's got a great series about parking minimums and urban highways and you know, public housing and gets really deep into a lot of these details using city skylines is a really useful uh, educational tool. Just yesterday, we got a great video from another YouTuber called Prez, who is uh, using city skylines to illustrate the issues around uh, urban development in the Bay Area at the moment. So he made a great video on missing middle housing and showing sort of what's available. You know, you could really get a lot of a lot of good stuff done by cutting together city skylines footage and real footage and all sorts of stuff. So if you want to bring it to work, it works like that too if you're careful. Anyway, uh, we are going to quickly transition here to uh, the game itself. So that's that's as much background as I can blast through very quickly. Some pre-filled city maps in the workshop? Yes, there are, which is really great. So it's uh, this is a city I've had for a little while. Uh, hopefully there have been no big fires. I've been letting it play through. So hopefully everything's looking good and working well. Um, I'm going to be taking this city right now with the time that we have still. 
should be about 10, 15 minutes. And we're going to take a look and start to try to do something that you can do now in City Skylines with the additional uh, vehicles. Uh, we can right size some transit networks, which is really fun. So we can jump in and take a look. And if you look all over the city, We've got great, uh, we actually have very good transit coverage. So despite the fact there's only 160,000 people being simulated, which is eh, probably a little small. And by probably, I mean, definitely, we've got quite the towering central business district. But, you know, uh, we have to make some sacrifices to get this scale. But we have an intense and crazy network of metros and buses and everything, which is a huge mess. Uh, which map am I using? I honestly can't remember. I've had this kicking around for a really long time. Uh, started following it, followed along a 2019 tutorial series to teach the ins and outs. Uh, and he recommended tutorial series are a little tricky. So everybody kind of has a different style. Um, I'd recommend just following along with some vanilla or near vanilla game build. So a YouTuber named $2.20 has done some really cool stuff. He's uh, an Australian guy. Uh, he's not a planner or anything like that, but he can kind of help you get around the game mechanics and everything uh, and get a handle on that. But anyway, we have this great view of our city's messy transit networks, uh, including this incredible downtown sort of multimodal hub with this bus facility and train facility. But if we take a look at some of these uh, routes, Traditionally, the games really only had one or two uh, bus variations, and now with uh, built-in content packs, including the airport's DLC and my content creator pack, um, we can start to right-size uh, transit lines and vehicles. So this actually affects how much they cost for upkeep. It affects speed and acceleration. There's lots of different kind of fun mechanics. So this is a little suburban circulator route. And right now it's using big, huge coach buses, which uh, we don't need. This is the default bus in the game. Why it's a coach bus and not a city bus. I'm very confused, but it happens. So what we can do here is we can start going through the city now and you can start to choose what is the right size. So I like the mini bus for this. In fact, I designed it for the pack for this. So once we set these out, now a nearby bus depot these original buses on the line will return to where they came from and a nearby bus depot will hopefully dispatch us mini buses for this line which is a much much better fit at the moment i'm trying to see if i can find any uh all the bus depots are a little far away but hopefully they'll arrive pretty soon uh, actually i can find some approaching yeah here we go so right now you can see our fleet of minibuses all arriving so uh they're all rolling in which is going to be a lot of fun and they fit much more appropriately they hold fewer people but they've got you know less uh noise pollution less sorts of stuff if it was a van who i say it probably is so in researching a bunch of this stuff i found out the uh specific prototypes and have kind of discovered them which is really fun so you can sort of see there's now different buses for all sorts of different situations. One of my favorites I have here. So uh, this, oh, it's actually this line right here. You can see I've got dedicated bus lanes, uh, bus and right turn lanes, of course. Um, but this is a BRT route corridor. Uh, it's bus lanes the entire way. And if you come over here, this is a extremely popular transfer stop. There's 500 people waiting for buses here, which at the default game's base of 30 passengers per bus, not going to happen. They're all transferring from the metro. Uh, so you can just switch these over, and now we have 32 uh, super bendy buses, which uh, was my sort of marketing name, I suppose, for some insane bi-articulated buses, which we can see coming out right here. So these guys hold 100 people, and are a nightmare on anything except for dedicated BRT, just because they're so damn big. But uh, once we get here, they're gonna automatically try to unbunch, uh, which is really helpful, so you don't end up with that. 500 at a bus stop, those are rookie numbers, yeah. That's at one stop though, so you can see people are starting to pile up, but hopefully we'll be able to kind of continue with this. We head downtown um, for our next bus, 
we have uh yeah it's over here actually have an intercity bus station on that side but down here uh we can start to look a handful of these buses probably not the right choices for these routes um been really excited you can see this is a all platforms used at this bus stop and they go all over the city it's a really cool visualization as well i've actually used this a handful of times for um for different uh like inspiration for graphics used for bus network redesigns in real life if you know sort of the white and shaded city with uh these brightly colored lines it's kind of a you have to use this as a visualization of transit routes for people who aren't really familiar with transit stuff. It turns out it's actually really useful to use for outreach and communication, sort of ape the design language of some of these games. Uh, but anyway, so we can kind of continue with these and we've got standard uh, articulated buses. I've got some uh, double deckers as well, which can be useful. There are new ones for Airport Express. Trains as well, I've enjoyed doing a lot. So. Uh, we've got sort of longer lines with fewer stops, and we can throw a Shinkansen on that route. Whereas over here, got a few more passengers, and you know, put a New Jersey Transit train on there. Why not? And those will start to spawn pretty soon, and will be able to be used kind of all over the city. So, yeah, had ten thousand people waiting at a transit center. Yep, crazy. So, yeah, I see a few people listing some mods. Um, traffic manager is a great one. So that kind of makes the traffic more realistic. I was kind of alluding to that earlier at the cost of some game performance. But there's some really cool things that, like, this game, as you could probably tell, doesn't really simulate parking in any traditional, you know, any substantial way, at least. Uh, but we can jump in and, like... You can turn that on so everybody has to drive and find a parking spot, which is a huge hit to game performance, but obviously it means you have to plan much more realistically. I think there's a famous old quote of uh, researching for a SimCity game. It's like, yeah, we had to pretend the parking doesn't exist, because if it did, everybody's city would just be all parking lots, which would be no fun. Which, of course, for you know, transit industry and planning professionals, yeah, it kind of is no fun <laughs> necessarily, but... It might be something you want to have to try to simulate. So lots of fun stuff to do like that. So uh, yeah, somebody has made a mod for simulating parking and parking reform. Um, you know, there's a lot of very handy sorts of data tools for this. Uh, the numbers are always a little dubious uh, and they might be really tiny to see, but you get ridership numbers. Uh, another thing the game has launched actually has been uh, root query mode. So you can actually click segments of road and you get everybody's true traffic location so the, and type of vehicle they're in as well, whether they're pedestrians or transit or a city vehicle or a delivery truck, uh, whatever. So, you know, this little section of road downtown is seeing public transit vehicles and cargo coming from all the way over here, which in this case, you could actually zoom all the way in and it's a taxi rider. So somebody has come probably from the airport out in this corner via taxi and they're driving all the way into downtown over here. So, you know, you can really use these tools to determine, you know, this is, it's a much easier than conducting a full study, uh, which I think helps. Obviously, if we click, click the uh, train station here, you can see the rail routes coming in and you can see people walking, um, which is neat. This is pedestrian paths. So you can see this sort of park is a really handy circulator for people all coming through. Um, learning about where they need to go. You can click buildings and get their entire sort of thing. It's always a little lower scale than real life, obviously. But at this big office skyscraper, you can see most people are driving here, which is sort of bizarre considering it's really damn close to this train station uh, and the bus terminal. So you need to kind of figure out how to actually shoot for mode share, um, which is, of course, calculated in some way. Uh, you can see, yeah, so this bus line car trip saved 46%. So in this case, half of all cars along this corridor, this bus is satisfying half the demand along this corridor. Uh, and that can be changed and remixed and checked by either making it faster with faster roads and higher speed limits or dedicated lanes. Um, yeah, and it's it's really useful. So Dedicated lanes can help. Honestly, like linearizing the corridor can help. You can really use a lot of these um, 
mechanics and things you use in real life to improve transit corridors it, in the game. It simulates it really nicely. In fact, I have a tiny bit of experience with Visim and other kind of simulation modes. I found that this actually simulates multimodal transit uh, almost as well, which when you consider the, the increased performance is pretty crazy. So that's nice. Uh, I think I'm running a little low on time. I did have one more thing to do, which is the very satisfying uh, way that you deal with NIMBYs in this game. So just like real life, you get a incessant loud Twitter feed, which huh, looks like I have more comprehensively disabled than I was expecting. Oh, there we go. So you can see people uh, bitching about or complimenting your city, generally speaking, bitching about. Uh, yeah. And you can figure out what's a little bit handy. So we can find somebody, everything about new. You know what? Oliver Smithson, I don't like your tone. You can find exactly where he lives and uh, deal with him. Just like that. Sorry, bud. See ya. Uh, and if there's, if there's somebody else who maybe, maybe even less, come on. Uh, you know. Thank you, Holly Jackson says my city is very attractive. Uh, we have other ways of dealing with that as well. So I'm just going to open up the old natural disasters menu, and we're going to, you know, clear out this neighborhood, do a little bit of uh, urban renewal here, yeah, to let them upzone it. So this is sort of tactical urbanism. Uh, if your tactics are summoning a meteor from space. Yeah, Holly's neighbors are a little bit of collateral damage here um, for the crime of having her actually compliment this city. But uh, hopefully this will be this will be over quickly and we'll be able to uh, redevelop, I suppose. Uh, anyway. Cool, so that's about all the time I have, I think. This went really quickly. Uh <laughs> So uh, I'll take a few questions if anybody has any while we wait for this meteor to come obliterate uh, Manor Square or uh, you know, perhaps this is, uh, we'll just call it rezoning as we rezone Manor Square here. Uh, pretty soon. How do you feel about the airport DLC? Uh, I love it, honestly. I don't have a big airport built out here. I thought it's really fun. Uh, here we go. Inbound. Uh, so, here we go. There are a couple idiosyncrasies. I don't know if you heard the announcement of astrologists reporting a meteor, which, oop, there we go. Uh, hilariously, I don't know if you can really see, uh, in some pro, or some pro transit praxis, disasters fling cars all over. So, uh, people are getting, you know, launched across the map in their cars. Uh, transit's fine though. Transit will keep working. So, there we go. Just a little while. Just need to do a little bit of cleanup. Expressway's fine. Needs some cleanup here, so it's blocked. Our metro's actually blocked here. You know what? We'll just deal with that right away. Get this guy fixed. Just clean the tracks there. Hopefully they'll... Yep, yeah, they're off. So, anyway. Taken care of. Uh, we'll just let the fire services and everybody figure those out. That's it.